So I'm so glad to be with you this morning. I thank you immensely for the invitation, and I thank you for coming out in this heat, and uh, I'm just welcomed and feel welcomed. It just goes to show you that we are all making time for God, yes? So maybe I don't need to give you a sermon this morning, but don't worry. <laughs> I love this text. It's one of my favorites, and I wish to just share with you some of my thoughts uh, as a backdrop of the scripture to our lives today. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, teach us to pray so that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight. Plant your wisdom in our hearts so that it will be with us wherever you would have us go. And may you bless each person with the one message you have intended specifically for him or her this day. Amen. On my desk sits a very small frame that says, a day wrapped in prayer will never come undone. And behind me, next to my computer, is another frame that says, this is the day the Lord has made, so don't mess it up. You know, I do need to be reminded that the best way not to mess up a day is to pray. And we all need that reminder, don't we? Prayer, prayer. It's God's language for communicating with us, and it can sound like, look like, be like anything that lets God know just how much we value God's presence in our lives. Does anyone remember the movie, The Sister Act. I know I'm dating myself, but I thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, Whoopi Goldberg's character disguises herself as a nun in order to seek refuge in a convent from some thugs. In one scene, Mother Superior, Sister Mary Patrick, says, on behalf of all the sisters here at St. Catherine's, I'd like to offer our great big hi there and hello to Sister Mary Clarence, that's Whoopi. And as part of the welcome, I thought that maybe, just maybe our new sister could offer today's blessing. At first, Sister Mary Clarence, Whoopi Goldberg, hesitates and then says, this is very thoughtful of you, Mary Patrick, but I really, oh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that, sure, sure. Oh, fudge. Oh, bless us, O oh Lord, for these gifts, thy gifts, which we're about to receive. And, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of no food, I will fear no hunger. We want you to give us this day our daily bread. And to the republic for which it stands, and by the power invested in me, I pronounce us ready to eat. Amen. And around the table, each sister dutifully echoed, Amen, Amen, Amen. So what do you think? Does it matter to God how we pray? Or is God more interested in our desire to pray and our practice of praying. If we look to Jesus, prayer was the bedrock of his life. It was the foundation, his core, his heart. Through prayer, Jesus was nurtured and guided through the wilderness of worldly temptation. Through prayer, Jesus healed, taught, forgave, and called others to follow. And through prayer, he met the trials of life, even death on the cross, without anger, without blame, without condemnation. Could prayer be as powerful and beneficial to us as well? God's language. Jesus spoke it, so did John the Baptist. And I have to believe the disciples spoke the language of prayer too but something compelled them to ask Jesus for instruction. 
Maybe they noticed a difference in Jesus while he was praying and after he was praying. Maybe they were thinking of the time they were unable to cast out an evil spirit and had to turn to Jesus for help. Why couldn't we do it, they asked. And Jesus responded, this kind can only come out through prayer. You know, the disciples never asked Jesus to teach them to preach or heal or to perform signs. They only asked him how to pray. And the disciples are not the only ones with this question. One of the most frequent questions I receive from the parents of new confirmands is, will you please teach my confirmand how to pray? And sooner rather than later. And when I have often invited congregations to send me their questions of faith, I discover that time and time again, many are related to prayer. Do you find praying comes easy or is it a struggle? There was a time when I found prayer to be very nerve wracking. What words should I use? How do I begin? Can prayers be short? Do I need to be alone as Matthew records Jesus saying? Must I be quiet on my knees and so on? Then after struggling with the mechanics, I wondered what should I expect from God? If my prayers are too specific, am I testing God? Or if my prayers are too vague, do I lack faith? My deepest desire was to get it right, just to get it right. Since then, thankfully, God and I have come to terms, and I have discovered that what is more important than technique is making prayer a habit. If I want to be close to God, then God and I need to talk all the time. Did anyone teach you to pray? Do you remember who? Some people are surprised to learn that the Lord's Prayer is in the Bible. But as you heard this morning, it is and it isn't. <laughs> if you have prayed the Lord's Prayer in the company of those raised in the Roman Catholic tradition, you will notice that they end the prayer essentially where Luke does with the words, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is different from, actually, I think I read from the time of trial. But anyway, that is different from what we pray, isn't it? So where do the words, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever come from? Well, it comes from the Bible. First Chronicle chapter 29. The early church appropriated King David's words of praise found at the conclusion of his farewell prayer. And his words have endured. Many of us have memorized the Lord's Prayer as youngsters. But as with most everything we learned when we were young, we need to be reminded of what we learned or what Jesus taught. In response to the disciples' request, Jesus taught them the structure of a prayer that we know is the Lord's Prayer. But notably, he did not stop there. In fact, the majority of today's text is devoted to encouraging the disciples, us, to be persistent in prayer, unrelenting, bold, shameless even. Don't sell God short. God is always on call and ready to listen. So keep on asking, seeking, and knocking at God's door because God is faithful and will answer our prayers. God does not put us on hold when we pray. God responds. You know, one of my most vivid memories of an intense conversation with God happened at one of my earlier birthdays. I wanted to do something I had never done before and decided on white river rafting. So my husband David and I headed north to the Penobscot River in Maine and signed up for the adventure of a lifetime. It was a gorgeous summer day, and over 50 rubber rafts headed down the river that morning. And ours 
was the only raft that ran into trouble. Repeatedly. The first time we capsized and were thrown from the raft, I thought, well, at least we all got cooled off. The second time, only my husband David managed to stay in the raft. I wish I knew his secret. The rest of us, including our guide, went flying overboard. Fortunately, David managed to get us all back in the boat. After lunch, we were told we had just one more stretch of rapids. Then it would be clear sailing. Sounded good, but it was not to be. We launched our raft after lunch and had no sooner begun paddling when I noticed we were headed for the rocks. Why wasn't our guide yelling, paddle right, paddle right? No clue, no clue. But before we knew it, we were one with those rocks as we were thrown from the raft like rag dolls. I was now in survival mode, and all I could think of was our training before we embarked. You do not want to be on the side of the river, we were told. With a strong current, you can easily become entangled in the tree roots with little hope of getting free. Well, guess where I was? So I started praying, God, I need to be in the middle of the river. And in a flash, I was. Problem was, the rapids pulled me to the bottom of the river, and I looked up as the sun beamed through the waters. So I kept praying fervently. Suddenly and inexplicably, I felt a dramatic sense of tranquility. I became remarkably serene and remember asking God very calmly that if he had anything else for me to do, I sure could use a little assistance. Did I see my life flash in front of me? No, but I was completely filled with a deep peace that words cannot adequately explain. I, my soul was soothed and assured me that God was with me. And at that moment, nothing else mattered. Next thing I knew, I was on the surface of the river in the midst of the rapids, smack, pounding water in my face. I can't breathe, I thought. Then a break before the next wave hit. Quick, grab a breath now, over and over and over. As I struggled to keep my head above water, I heard a voice say, you can do this. And I remember thinking, don't ask me why I'm thinking these things when I'm in panic, but I remember thinking, I don't know this voice. They're not saying I can do this. They're saying you can do this. Persistence and perseverance paid off as I came to the end of the rapids and entered calm waters. By this time, numerous rafts had latched together and waited to be of assistance. One person stuck out a paddle for me to grab, which I did, hanging on for dear life. And they said, you must let go so we can get to the boat. And I went, seriously, let go? I was panic stricken. And it seemed like an eternity before I could compose myself and trust. David and I both survived the ordeal the capsizings and the trip to the hospital to be stitched up and taped up. Turned out we had sustained some pretty serious injuries. And looking back, I must say I'm sorry to say that my adventurous spirits has nearly been extinguished. That hot air balloon's gonna have to wait a while, maybe forever. But I learned a lot about prayer. God will never leave you, ever. You ask, you knock, you seek, and God will be revealed, just like Jesus said. Maybe not in ways we expect, but revealed nonetheless in ways that we need. Prayer. It's all about trust in God and acknowledging that we depend upon God for guiding us and making us complete. Otherwise, why do we pray? As Mother Teresa said, you really can't explain prayer. You must 
experience it. We naturally think of words, but prayer can merely be a sigh that expresses, I'm weary and in need of rest. Prayer can be a song as lovely as Pia Yezu, or even John Lennon, Lennon's Imagine. Your very life can be a prayer, as King David expresses so eloquently in Psalm 109. I am prayer, he writes. Prayer is an experience of becoming that brings you and God closer together. So you think and act like God, like Jesus, as you involve into the creation God uniquely intended you to be. Now, if you're feeling baffled or unsure about where you stand vis-a-vis -vis prayer, just ask Jesus to shed some light on what it is that might be out of control, broken, or in deep need of healing. And then wait patiently as God tends to your needs. Let this be your prayer. Friends, when all is said and done, there really are only two requirements for prayer. The first is self-understanding. What do I need? Maybe you don't know, that's okay. Number two, humility, to ask. And just one more thought. I would like to call your attention to the very last verse in this morning's scripture. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Almost as an afterthought, but I'm sure it wasn't, Jesus tells us that our prayers bring the Holy Spirit to the forefront of our lives. It is the Holy Spirit bestowed on all believers at Pentecost that it is, work with, that is at work within us to perfect our hearts, our minds, and our prayers. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Our prayers do not need to be perfect. We just need to pray. Friends, we are God's beloved. As Isaiah writes, God has called each of you by name, and each of you is precious in God's sight. Together, we are family. And prayer, it is the tie that binds. If we are a lamp and God is a wall socket, prayer is the cord. It needs to be plugged in for our light to shine. And God certainly wants our light to shine. May you make prayer an integral part of your day and joyfully discover that your faith grows stronger in a God who never gives up guiding you to become all that you were created to be, who supplies your very needs every day, and who loves you with a love that will never, ever let you go. Such a God seeks your love in return, and such a God is worthy of your devotion and prayers. May it be so. Amen.